Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be unboxing my Frozen Sonic Mini 8K. I'll be showing you everything I did to set it up, including all of my mistakes, and I'll be trying to explain how I'm using it in my artisan keycap making workflow. So just to reiterate, this isn't really a tutorial video, but I'm hoping that it's still helpful if you're trying to get into artisan keycap making and also looking into a resin 3D printer. So besides the printer itself, let's look at what else came in the box. We have our warranty information as well as some stickers. We've got our instruction manual, one pair of nitrile gloves, a funnel for the resin, sanding pad, a USB drive, and a hex key. We've got our power cords. We've got a metal scraper, which is a lot nicer than I thought it would be. We also got a plastic scraper. And lastly, the power brick. Looking into the manual, if you're interested in the specifications, feel free to pause the video and view them here. And finally, the fun part, setting up my 3D printer for its first print. Admittedly, this is my first 3D printer that I've ever owned, so I'm just following the instructions as best as I can here. And the first thing I notice is that my table is definitely not completely level as the 3D printer has a lot of wobble to it. So I moved my printer to a more level surface and now I'm peeling off the protective film off the printer's LCD. Next, I for some reason screwed in the resin vat when I should have left this off as I needed to do the leveling and the other testing before this. Now all we gotta do is plug in the power cord and power on the printer for the first time. Now I'm doing the LCD test, which again, I should have taken the vat off, but oh well, it should be fine, hopefully. Next, I have to do the build plate leveling, which requires me to unscrew all four screws of the build plate to make sure it's loose. Then it's going to lower onto this piece of paper and I have to tighten it to make sure the paper stays firmly in place when I tug it on all four corners. Once that looks good, I can hit done and the build plate will raise back to the top. Great, now that I think all of the initial testing and setup is done, I can plug in the USB, which already has the test print file included, and then I can pour my resin into the vat. Make sure to give it a thorough shake first. And I mean super thorough. You want to make sure everything is fully incorporated. Finally, I'll put the UV cover back on and then we'll begin our first test print. As you can see, it looks like it's going to take a little over two and a half hours. Two and a half hours later, we can see that my test print has finished. First, we'll need to remove it from the build plate. This honestly took me a bit longer than I'm willing to admit, but once we get it off, we'll need to clean it with 99% IPA. At least where I live, Amazon has been the cheapest source for IPA. Here, I'm just shaking and stirring the print around. Admittedly, this is not the best way to clean your print. I'm just doing this quickly because it's a test print. And here's where I should be showing you the final cleaned test print. However, I've lost the footage since filming and I don't have the test print anymore. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with the rest of the video. So now that my printer seems good to go, I can try printing a stem cavity. I'm printing a stem cavity from the ZBot system. If you have no idea what the ZBot system is, you can check out my previous videos on the ZBot system, which should be somewhere in the corner here or linked down below in the description. So to start, I've loaded the stem cavity STL straight from the GitHub repo into my software of choice, Blender. It's probably smarter here to use proper CAD software, but I don't want to teach myself another tool at the moment as I'm much more comfortable in Blender, but feel free to use whatever tool you'd like. The first thing I'm tackling here is customizing how tightly the stem holds onto a keyboard switch. Based on my experience and the specific resins that I'm using, I found that I needed to alter the inner stem dimensions of this SDL for a tighter fit. My first idea was to simply uniformly scale down the stem by like 5% or so. At the time, I thought this would be an easy way to accomplish a tighter fit. 
but now that I'm looking back on this, it's probably very incorrect and could lead to cracking of your keycap stems. After a lot of trial and error, I found a better way to do this. What I did was alter the lengths based on the factory dimensions of the stems that you're trying to match. So for my case, I found a photo online based on the cherry stem dimensions. From this, I just played around and shortened each length for a tighter fit. So to do this in Blender, I first used the Measure It add-on to measure all of the sides of my stem. After doing that, it looks like the dimensions match that graphic that I showed you earlier. From there, I slightly scaled down each of the tolerances in order to accomplish a tighter fit. Now that I've tightened the tolerances of my stem here, we can proceed with the maker's mark. To begin with adding your maker's mark to your stem cavity, I would recommend using Illustrator and converting it into an SVG. Once you do that, you can import your maker's mark into Blender. I ran into a few troubles here the first time I did this, so I'll link below a stack exchange write-up that helped me solve my issues. So here I'm just placing my maker's mark into the stem cavity using Blender snapping functionality. Also make sure to check the orientation. Lastly, I'm adding the solidify modifier in order to extrude out the maker's mark. So that's pretty much how I set up my stem cavity for printing. There was a lot of trial and error over the past couple of weeks and a lot of failed prints, which I'm not showing you in this video, but I hope this helps to paint a better picture of some of the processes that you might do if you choose to get a 3D printer for your keycap making.